Morning guys, what's going on? Just packing up, getting all ready to go up to Irvine to go train with all the guys. Um, yeah, it's like 5.45 in the morning, almost six o'clock in the morning, so we're gonna head up here pretty soon and hopefully get a pretty good session in. What's up, Omar? Pro GK. Huh? What's up, Pro GK? That's right, baby. <laughs> How you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How's everything been? It's good. It's really good. So during this training session, I want to give a little voiceover just to answer a very common question that I get. And that question is, Matt, how do you prepare and plan out your training sessions and or workouts? And the short answer is that it really does depend. And I know that is the absolute worst answer to possibly give, but it honestly is true but I will give you know my entire like thought process as I do this. So if it's an individual training session just by myself, then I like to plan out exactly the drills that I'm gonna do that day, um, either the night before or the morning of that training session. So I just like doing that. When I'm by myself, I like having a very set training program to follow to keep me in line and focus for the entire session. Uh, however, even with that plan, sometimes I still have to change up the session when I get to the field or wherever, depending on the circumstances. Like, uh, for example, if I get to the field and the field is completely taken. So now I'm just training off the field in this tiny patch of turf or this tiny patch of grass off to the side. Or if I get to the field and both goals are locked up and put away, then I have to completely alter my training plan on the spot as I get there. Uh, for team training sessions, like the one that you're watching right now, I usually prepare the full session right as I get to the field or even make it up as I go uh, along with the session. And again, it's based upon a lot of things. It's based upon the circumstances, like how many people I have at that training session, the space that I have available to run the session and the equipment that I have at the session. Uh, if I knew 100% for sure the exact number of players that I had, the exact amount of space that I had, and the equipment that I had, like if I had my own facility or something, then I would plan out these full sessions beforehand, maybe the day before or even a week before. But for my situation right now in off season, it's just not realistic. I really never know how many players are gonna show up at 7 a.m. I really never know how many players are gonna flake out or how many players are gonna end up bringing a friend or two along with them. Uh, now for the group sessions, I like to follow a very general structure and that general structure is kind of like how a normal standard team training session I'd have with my professional team. So the general formula of a team training is warm up, rondos, passing patterns, maybe a little bit of possession and then small sided games. And then you kind of throw in maybe a few little drills around either at the beginning or the end or whatever. So I pretty much do exactly that. So. Like just what I said, I like to get in a 10 to 15 minute warm up. I like to do a little bit of passing around in a circle just to get the touch right and maybe get the body kind of moving a little bit more and then go straight into rondos if I have enough people. Uh, after rondos, when you're really feeling warm and ready, then I like to do a form of a drill like either a passing pattern, a juggling game or some other type of exercise depending on the amount of people that I have and kind of specifically what everybody wants to work on as well. You know, this isn't just a dictatorship. A lot of times I'll ask, like, is there anything that anybody really wants to do right now with this number of people and then after that I really just like to play whether it's possession some tight transition work or maybe 4v4 like mini goals when I'm with a group in off season my favorite thing to do is to just play games get some work in. I think that's the best thing to do if it's an individual training session it really does vary a lot more than that like I, I really base it around some of the areas of my game that I really want to get some extra work done like crossing maybe some driven passes some first touch work and or maybe some 1v1 attacking dribbling moves that's just personally what I really like to do and what I really like to work on because I think those are areas of my game that I do either a lot and I want to just do extra work in or I think those are areas of my game that just maybe need a little bit more work and I know this sounds very very vague but that's honestly what goes through my head uh, when I'm planning out these sessions and I'm able to do this I'm able to do this on the fly or right as I get to the field or even as a lot as I go along in the session because I have this database of hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of training drills all up in my head from this 22 years of playing soccer every single year that I've played this game with different coaches different teammates in different countries etc I've picked up drills games and full training sessions and kind of just logged it away in my head 
so that now uh, you can give me four players with no access to a goal and I'd immediately go, well, okay, I can make a training session. Let's do a square passing pattern with four players. Then let's go into a 3v1 transition game. Uh, let's do a, a game of four person, like two touch juggling. And then we'll just finish with some 2v2 mini goals. And then maybe if anybody's feeling up for it, we can do horseshoes. That's a very good four person game. Um, so it's this combination, I feel like, of evaluating the number of players I have, the resources I have that day, and then also kind of following a general structure or hitting the weaker areas of my game that I want to hit. And, I'm, and then also being able to have this database of thousands of, of drills to call upon. So my advice for you guys is to be a sponge. So with every team you play for, every player you train with, every coach you meet, every individual session you do, every YouTube video that you watch, every Instagram drill you see, soak up that drill. Either write it down, remember it, you know, save it in the archives of Instagram, um, favorite the YouTube video or whatever, so you can do the same exact thing I did. Um, and honestly, if I, I know I'm gonna get this comment, but if I read it, it's gonna kill me. But I know I'm gonna see like, okay, well, great, Matt, but where do I find these drills? And that would, that would kill me because that's literally the whole entire idea behind my Become Elite business in the first place. I mean, that's what I wanted to do. That's what I've literally devoted besides playing professional soccer, but what I've literally I devoted my life for the last five years to doing. I wanted to give all the knowledge, drills, lessons, exercises, workouts, training sessions, etc., that I've learned over all these years and give them to you guys for free via YouTube and Instagram and whatever. You guys have so much available to you right now and not just from me, but from everybody on YouTube or everybody from Instagram, but you have so much available to you right now to succeed. I personally, back at 16 year, years old when YouTube was barely a thing, I would have absolutely killed for that. I would have literally done anything to have hundreds of drills on YouTube available for me or an Instagram that puts out a new drill every day or every other day. Be a sponge, soak this all up, and put it to use in your own trainings and workouts. It will definitely take some practice and experience on your own to make your own training sessions, but in a few years, you should be able to create some fantastic training sessions for yourself or for you and some teammates. Please, 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 please take advantage of this. All right, that's it. Peace out. <laughs>、right, so, uh, just finished the training session. It was really good.、Uh, now, Mimi and I are just stopping at Nectar Juice Bar. We're just gonna get like a protein like, smoothie, protein shake, or something, and then we'll drive all the way back down to San Diego. But,、uh, good session. Okay, so it is 11 46 in the morning, still in the morning, which is pretty cool, even though we've had like a two and a half hour training session and driven all the way up to Irvine and back. Mimi has like five hours of class today, right? From like 12 to 5. So that means it's just my work day of just editing up a couple of YouTube videos and doing all that stuff. And then this weekend, I'm actually having like a little college reunion with all of my friends. Armando's gonna go, Omar from Pro GK is gonna go, and a few other guys that I just played college soccer with up in Big Sur. We're just having like a little reunion hangout time. So I'm really excited for that. But I need to get a lot of work done today in order to have like a free weekend. So that's what I'll be doing for the most of the day. And I'll probably might get a workout in. So that is the plan for all of this afternoon. Okay, I'm just taking a quick break. I'm gonna make some lunch. It's gonna be like the same exact lunch that I always have. I pretty much always have the same breakfast, same lunch, and then for dinner, that's when I kind of like mix it up.、Um, might be a little different, but it's pretty much gonna be eggs, fruit, and something else. All right, so I actually have lied. I am having something pretty different than I usually have. I'm having three eggs, a、uh, baked potato with some butter. And then I'm having a little bit of like rotisserie chicken, some blueberries, and some yogurt covered pretzels. So、um, that's lunch, if you guys can see it. I am still I'm making some pretty good progress on the last vlog, but it's just hard because when you get like the new, like when you upgrade, every upgrade that I've made in camera equipment and everything has just like added more and more to the editing process. Like when I just shot on my iPhone 5 and I used iMovie to edit, it took me, I don't know, two hours. And then when I upgraded to the Canon 80D, I was like, okay, sweet, I can do a whole bunch more now. I, I started adding a little bit more effects and transitions. So it made that longer. And now with this one, it can shoot in slow mo, it has like a flat picture profile so I can color correct everything.、Um, so now it just keeps on adding, 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 which again, I kind of do it to myself because I like it, but it just takes a long time <laughs> to edit all these videos. So I hope you guys enjoy them. <laughs>
All right, so it's like nighttime now. Just been doing a little bit more work. We grabbed, Mimi and I grabbed Chipotle for dinner, so nothing too, nothing too exciting. But I'm just gonna end this video right now with a continuous Q&A. So this question is from Jeremy Redger, and he goes, question, what have you done to separate yourself from other players to play at such a high level? Um, that's a good question. And, and honestly, I think it's a combination of just daily work so daily doing the little things and that daily work ethic combined with just not quitting. So as I say this because as every level you jump up, so as you go from like a, a high school level athlete to the college level, there's gonna be a lot of players that just don't reach that D1 level or for whatever reason and just wanna stop. Same exact reason in college. There's just a lot of players that could play professionally but they just want to continue on with their life and they just quit. So with every year that you just don't quit, more and more players just start to drop off, drop off, drop off. And you continue just to continue to train, continue to build, continue to build experience. So like now as, as a 27 year old, I only have a handful of people that I knew back in high school that are still playing actually that I knew back in high school I don't think anybody is, I think it's just me. So if you just don't quit, you just kind of like weed out everybody else who quits along the way, whether they face a setback or whatever. And the other thing is just that daily work ethic doing something. I mean, that's the honest truth. It's just every single day I've been training, I've been working out. I was the person who put in the most effort into digging to find college coaches' emails and sending them a personalized email. I was the person who worked the hardest on their highlight video. I was the person that hit up every old coach and every connection that I had just to see if they could help me in any way to reach the pro game. I was the person that did the stuff that a lot of people weren't willing to do, whether that was with that was training or if that was tra traveling five hours to go meet somebody just to have coffee or if that was driving from Sacramento to LA every single weekend to play for a, a semi-professional team that I thought would have a good connection later into the pro game. I just put that extra effort in every single day. So that's the two things that separated me from everybody else is that I didn't quit. And I was just always willing to do the extra effort in every single aspect of my career. Um, huh. And you have a beautiful fiance that's helped you along the way. <laughs> I have a beautiful fiance that's helped me along the way. All right, so that's it. So I am gonna go to bed now. It's like eight o'clock, probably watch something a little bit and then just, do it all again tomorrow. Put in that daily uh, work ethic to just keep on uh, improving. So that's it for the video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Peace. Oh.